Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I'd like to solve a couple of problems in solid geometry today. It's about pyramids. Uh, we have already solved a certain number of problems, some of them with little tricks maybe. And this one, actually there are two problems here. Originally I wanted to introduce only the second one, but then I decided that the first one would be really a good um, introduction into the second. Well, obviously, as usually, I encourage you to try to solve these problems just by yourself. They are all presented on unizor.com um, website, and that's where I suggest you to uh, watch this lecture from, um, because there are notes, and notes in this particular case is basically the conditions of the problem itself with an answer. Answer is very important for you if you want to just solve it yourself. So you will check your answer for correctness. <coughs> So, um, I will tell you um, why I have introduced the first one when I will start the second problem in this lecture. So, let me start from the first one, which is not really very difficult at all. Okay, uh, what do we have? We have right rectangular prism. Okay. A, B, C, D is lower base. A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime is upper base. And um, the sides, so if it's a right rectangular prism, I need three dimensions. The base is a rectangle, so it should be x and y, widths and lengths, or depths, whatever, and height would be z. So x, y, and z are three numbers which basically completely define right rectangular pyramid. So that's the beginning of this. Next is, what I will do is, I will connect certain vertices to get uh, a new object inside of this pyramid. I will do this. I will connect B and B prime and D prime. Uh, B prime and C. A and C. And B prime and A. And A and D prime. Is that it? No. One more. Okay. So, what I would like to do is there are eight different vertices in this right rectangle uh, prism. I choose four this, this on the top base and uh, this and this on the bottom. And I will cut basically all other corners. Corner A prime, corner C prime, corner B and corner D, which is behind. So I have a triangular pyramid left. I hope you, you see it. Let's consider B prime as its top. A, D prime, C as its base. And you have three edges, side edges, B prime A, B prime D, and B prime C. Now, what I would like to know is the volume of this pyramid which is inside this prism in terms of X, Y, and Z. Now, if I will try to find out its volume just based on its own dimensions. I, basically, I know all the dimensions. For instance, AC is a diagonal of a rectangle x by y, which means I know the length of AC, which is square root of x squared plus y squared by, by the theorem, by, by the Pythagorean theorem. And same thing every other. So, every edge of this 
pyramid is basically a diagonal in the corresponding rectangle. So I know basically all the dimensions. But it would be very difficult for me to find out its volume because I have to find out somehow the area of the base which is ACD prime. Well, I can do it because I know three dimensions of the sides and I can use the Heron's formula for um, the area of triangle. But to find out the altitude of this pyramid, which is perpendicular from B prime to uh, a plane defined by A, D prime and C would be kind of difficult, I would say. So, it's difficult, but what's easier? Well, easier is to take the volume of the entire pyramid and subtract these four pyramid which I cut out because I'm cutting out also a pyramid like for instance from the C, pro C prime I'm cutting the pyramid which has a, a, a apex at C prime and the base at C B prime D this, tri this triangle why is it easier well because the volume of this pyramid is much easier to calculate look I know that this is also x, right? This is x, this is x, this is x. This is y, uh, this is y, and this is y. This is z, this is z, this is z, and this is z. So, this is a pyramid which has a right triangle as a base, and I know the altitude because this c, c prime is perpendicular to uh, the base, which is C prime, B prime, D prime. So it's much easier to calculate the volume of this piece. And same thing with every other. Now let's just think about every other. But let's start from this one and then we'll go to, to others. What's the, for instance, volume of this uh, pyramid? It's one third, right? Area of the base, which is X by Y, two catety of the right triangle. So it's X, Y divided by two times altitude which is z which is one six well x y z divided by six now let's take any other pyramid let's say the pyramid which has an apex b which i'm cutting out b and the uh base a c b prime uh, no sorry a c d prime am i right no 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 a, C, B prime, I was first the first time. So the B is apex, and I'm cutting off the pyramid which has this apex and the base A, C, B prime. Same thing. The base is X by Y right triangle. So it's one third <coughs> X, Y divided by two. And the altitude is again Z. So again, we have X, Y, Z divided by 6. So 1, 2, then this pyramid which I'm cutting out, A prime is apex and uh, A, B prime, D prime is uh, the base. Same thing. I can use the A, D prime, B prime as the base and A prime, A as an apex, uh, as an altitude and I will have again x by y over 2 this is z and one third it will be exactly the same thing so all four pyramids which I'm cutting out have this particular um, volume so there are four of them one has an apex at a prime c prime b and d which is from that side from behind uh, I can consider d as a as an apex and then the a D prime C as a, as, as a base. But again, I will turn it on the side so my base would actually be A D C and apex would be D D prime. Same thing with everyone. So all of them, there are four of them, so it's four times X Y Z divided by six, which is two third X Y Z. Two x y z divided by three. That's the volume which I'm cutting out. Okay, great. 
So, what's the volume of the original prism? Well, it's obviously x times y, which is the base, times z. So I have to subtract from x, y, z, I have to subtract 2 third x, y, z, and the result would be x, y, z divided by 3. So the, the volume of this particular pyramid inside is x, y, z divided by 3. Let's just remember this, and this is the end of the first problem, and now I'm ready to go to the second problem. Now, but before that, let me just mention one thing in this particular case. Look at this interesting pyramid, which is, let's say, having B prime as an apex and A, C, G prime as a, as a, as, as a base. Well, it's a uh, tetrahedron, right? So um, let's consider, for instance, uh, sides uh, its edges B prime D prime and A C. Now B prime D prime is a diagonal in this rectangle. A C is also a diagonal in the rectangle which is the lower base. Now these two rectangles are the same and since they are rectangles uh, their diagonals are the same. I mean they look different because it's different projections but if you just look from the top, it will be a rectangle. And two diagonals are equal to each other, right? So, what I, what, what I have here, I have an interesting property of this particular pyramid. Opposite sides, CD and B prime, D prime, prime are equal in length. Same thing with any other two opposite sides, which belong to two opposite rectangles of the prism. For instance, side uh, B prime A and compare it with C D prime. Now B prime A is on the front face and C D prime is on the back face of the, pir of the prism. Now these two faces, uh, D prime, C prime, C D, is one rectangle and A prime B prime B A is another rectangle. Rectangles are the same. So diagonals are the same. They're just two different diagonals. This is this way and this is and this is this way. So they are the same. So these opposite sides in this particular tetrahedron, C D prime and A B prime, exactly have the same length. So that's another pair. And obviously the third pair is uh, obviously on the same level. It's A D prime comparing to C B prime. So this is on the right uh, face and this is on the left face. Two faces are the same um, uh, rectangle, so their diagonals are the same. So this particular pyramid has an interesting property that every pair of opposite sides, and opposite means they're not really related to each other, they're on opposite uh, sides of this prism. They're all equal in, in, in lengths. This to this, uh, this to that, and this to this. And that's the end of the first problem with this commentary. And now let me go to the second problem. Second problem is the following. Given a pyramid which has this particular property that the opposite sides are the same. So I have pair A, B, and C are three different sizes. So the, for instance, uh, A, B prime equals to A, and so is C, D prime. Now, uh, let's say A, C is equal to B and so is B prime D prime and finally A D prime equals C it's on the left and C B prime on the right so let's say we have this particular pyramid 
and I would like to find its volume in terms of A, B, and C. Well, when I was trying to solve this problem, forget about the first problem for a second, with this prism, etc. I just have this pyramid. I was trying to solve it, and I was actually thinking for quite some time. Um, I tried different ways, something like direct approach. I mean, if I know these uh, six edges of this pyramid, I can somehow calculate, basically, um, the area of uh, one of the bases, for instance, uh, again, using the Heron's formula. And then, to evaluate the altitude, I really have to do a lot of work. I mean, I have to um, draw a perpendicular to a side w within the face, for instance, within the face A, B prime, D, I have to find out what's the uh, height of this, what's the altitude of this triangle, then have a um, B uh, projected down. I mean, it's, it's really complicated calculations. I wasn't able to get through. So, I was basically at a loss. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking maybe I should really um, um, extend this particular uh, pyramid to a prism, but not right rectangular prism like in this particular case, but just a prism when you can do this parallel line. So let's say if you have this pyramid, you can draw a parallel line here, so it will be like entire uh, new prism, something here, here and here, right, and here, something like this. So, I was thinking maybe it would be easier for the, for, for, uh, to, to solve the problem if I will just uh, create this prism, I will triple the volume, obviously, right, because the, uh, the base is the same and the height is the same, uh, but now this is the prism, so the pyramid would be one third of this. Now, is it a little easier? Maybe a little bit easier, but still I was not able to go through. And then I was just um, doing something else, and the uh, problem, which is not this one, but similar problem, actually caught my eyes. And then I realized that in this particular problem with the prism and uh, these uh, vertices connected, the pyramid which, 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 came to, uh, which came to be has this property of having opposite sides equal to each other, the same as in my problem. So, I was thinking that maybe if I can somehow convert my uh, pyramid into this prism, then I can use basically something which I have just introduced in the problem number one um, uh, as the calculation method. So I think it's just interesting for, for anybody to see how somebody else is thinking. I mean, I was thinking using some direct a approach, maybe some a little bit indirect, but still not exactly sufficient. And then a completely different, which doesn't really come to mind easily. So if you don't know anything about the first problem, if you just have the second problem, so you have a pyramid with opposite sides equal to each other like this, how can you get the volume? I mean, without knowing that it's possible to, uh, to build a prism, which basically makes the whole job much easier to calculate the volume. Um, it's, it's difficult to, you know, to come up. So it's only when you are doing something else, your associative thinking actually comes to play. And, well, it might just play in such a way that you basically realize that it can be used. And that's what happened with me, quite frankly. I realized I can use. So, now, the question is, can I, knowing just the pyramid, let's say B prime is an apex and A, C, D prime uh, is, is uh, the base, if I know just this pyramid, can I construct a prism which basically looks like my, my drawing right now? Well, I was thinking, and actually it's not really very difficult. Here is how, how we can do it. Well, let's say we would like to construct the base of this prism. Now, I know the diagonal, and if I will take this diagonal, which I also know, this is part of the pyramid edge, right, and bring it down parallel to, its, to, to itself, so what I will do is I will take this midpoint of this, uh, of this AC 
uh, uh, future diagonal. So I know AC, right? AC is edge of my pyramid. So I take the midpoint, and then I take the line, I construct the line which is parallel to B prime, D prime, something like this. Through this midpoint, and measure the same lengths on both sides as I have here on both sides because the diagonals are equal to each other, I will get points B and D, right? Same thing on the top. If I will take the midpoint and draw a line parallel to AC through this point and measure equal parts on both sides equal to these parts, I will have points A prime and, G prime and C prime. And now I have all eight points of my prism. Now, um, the fact that this is a, a rectangle is obvious, right? Because I took two lines of equal size, which are intersecting right in the middle, and obviously everything is all sides are equal and, and, and angles are, are right. I mean, it's very easy to prove. If, if you want to prove it, by the way, it's a good exercise on plane geometry. Um, now, so I consider this an, as, as an obvious fact, which everybody knows how to prove. So the top and bottom are um, uh, rectangles, right? Now. I think, again, it's a, it's a good exercise for anybody to prove that these sides are also rectangles. And um, I, I don't want to spend right now the time on this because it's really kind of a simple thing. Just use the, the plain theorems of Pythagorean theorems or whatever. And now, having built this particular um, prism, I know the volume of this pyramid inside in terms of x, y, and z. What I do, do not know is, I do not know the volume in terms of a, b, and c. But they are very close related to each other, right? I mean, I can always say that um, x squared plus y squared is equal to x squared and y squared is a c squared, which is what? b squared. Now, um, x squared plus z squared is a b prime, which is a squared. And finally, y squared and z squared, y squared plus z squared is equal to c b prime, c b prime at c squared. So this is a system of three uh, unknown variables, x, y, and z. System of three equations with three unknown variables. I obviously can find out what they are. Very easy. Well, let's first do it this way. If I will summarize all three of them, I will have twice x, y, x squared, twice y squared, and twice z squared, right? So I will have x squared plus y squared plus z squared times 2, and that will be the sum of this. So if I will divide it by 2, I will have this. Now, knowing sum of 3, I can subtract from this sum of 3, let's say, sum of these 2 only, and I will get the x squared, right? So x squared would be equal to sum of all three, which is a squared plus b squared plus c squared over two, minus sum of these two, y squared plus z squared, which is c squared. Now, y squared would be same thing, sum of all three, minus, to get y squared, I have to subtract x, uh, x squared and z squared, which is minus a squared. And same thing with z squared is equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared over 2 minus b squared. Right? So now, since I know x squared, y squared, and z squared, I can have the volume. And the volume is equal to 
square root of, well, one third, square root of x square, x square, y square, z square, right? That's what it is. Let me just do it a little bit more accurately. Again, y room is equal to divided by 3 square root of x square times y square plus z square. Now, why do I need square root and, and square of these? Well, because I know what is x square, y square, and z square. I don't know what x, y, and z, so I have to use the square root, right? So, which is, now let me just, uh, this expression, let me just use letter M for this. So it would be square root of m minus a square, m minus b square, m minus c square, divided by 3, where m is this. So everything is in terms of a, b, and c, the volume. Well, what lessons should we actually learn from this particular problem? Sometimes a very unusual um, approach can really si uh, simplify the problem significantly because if you will try to do it like directly with calculations etc I'm almost positive that you will not be able to do it even if you know how to do it let's say you have a, a system of three equations with three unknowns but they're all like square roots squares uh, cubes whatever it's basically unsolvable in, in a reasonable amount of time but if you do something really artificial, if you just come up with idea which will help you to simplify the problem, that would probably would be the right solution. Now, how can you come up with this solution? Quite frankly, I wasn't able to until something else prompted me. So, what's very important in this case as a lesson is to know that the more problem you solve, the more different associations you actually produce. For n problem you solve, you have almost like n square, uh, the order of n square, different associations between them, or even more than that. So it all depends on how your fantasy is working. So you always have to have as your repertoire a set of approaches. So now you probably can think about it this way. Okay, if I have some pyramid, maybe I will convert it into another more palatable, more understandable object, like in this case, right rectangular prism, which would help me to achieve the goal which I want. So that's very, very important as, as a lesson from this particular problem. I would suggest you to do these two problems again, just by yourself. And, uh, well, um, basically try to put it in writing in very accurate thing maybe with a nice drawing much better than whatever i do this uh, maybe in two colors i was trying to put blue color for the pyramid but i'm not sure how well visible it is on the on the video but in any case that's what i do suggest you uh, to do and i hope yeah, you will succeed so thanks very much and good luck <laughs>